I'm not using it for everything today. Graphic operations. Graphic operations? Ever used a laptop on an airplane? Server-based computing, of course, has disadvantages. That whole remote server component means that if you don't have a remote server, or you don't have access to that remote server, it ain't happening. So it's certainly the disadvantage of server-based computing is that we have to have a network connection. We also have the, the graphic operations, the display protocol limitations. How many people want to watch movies and edit um, videos and do, gra do intense graphical op operations via the RDP or ICA protocol? <laughs> How many people want to do that? Well, oh, okay, let me, let me say, wants to, yes, everybody. How many have tried that and feel that as an acceptable way to use those programs? So server-based computing inherently has some of these problems. We have application compatibility problems, which, as I said, kind of ties into that, that graphical uh, performance problem. And then there's problems with user personalization. Now, the user personalization problem is a bit more complex, and I can't talk about it too much today, but I'll say this. One of the big advantages of server-based computing is, is management, right? That's the first M. All of our users are in our, are in our are uh, in our data center. Well, on terminal server environment, those of you using terminal server, one copy of Windows is shared by many, many users. So now, as you know, even though you can use things like roaming profiles to allow users to customize their environments, a user has much more flexibility in, in, in customizing a laptop computer than they do in customizing their remote terminal server session, right? So I just pulled you a terminal server example, right? But I'm saying these are disadvantages of all server-based computing, not, not, just, not just terminal server. What, what about VDI? Sometimes people say, oh, VDI, it's great because you're just running Windows XP remotely. So now you have all the same customization that you want. But think of this. If you have 500 users in your environment that are using old kind of desktops, and you bring them back into your data center, do you want to have 500 disk image files on your stand? I mean, you do if you're EMC or NetApp or something like that. But really, d d who wants to manage 500 disk images? You have to antivirus, you have to patch Tuesday, you have to do all this kind of stuff. So if you build out VDI, but you just move your users one-to-one -one into your data center, you haven't saved anything. So how does VMware get around that? How does Citrix get around that? Well, VMware, of course, has View Composer with Lynx clones, allowing users to share one master disk image. That's cool, right? But the problem, of course, is that if you're sharing one master disk image, it's more like terminal server, and now users can't customize it as much as they would be on a laptop. So that's why I mentioned user personalization is a, is a bad problem, it's a hard problem for all server-based computing, terminal server, as well as VDI. So, so these disadvantages, again, uh, apply across the board. So what's that mean for today? So if we talk about server-based computing has advantages, Server-based computing has disadvantages. Can you use server-based computing for all of your users? As I said, probably not because of the disadvantages. So that means that today's solution is going to be a blend of, of both. And this is not going to represent that you want to put your head inside here. <laughs> We're trying to figure out which one's best for you. <laughs> but you have to blend. Certainly, server-based computing is going to work for some of your users, some of your applications, and some of your use cases but not for everyone. So you're going to have some server-based computing users and some traditional non-server-based computing users. So this session today, the purpose for us being here is to talk about terminal server versus VDI, right? Now, so far, we spent the first part of the session talking about server-based computing versus non-server-based computing. And of course, the reason we did that is because we wanted to focus on the fact that, that server-based computing is VDI and terminal server together. So what you can do is, within your environments, look at your applications, look at your users, look at your use cases, your devices, your connection scenarios, and figure out, for this specific use case, does server-based computing make sense? Forget VDI, forget terminal server. Figure out, does server-based computing make sense? And then you're going to have all your applications, all your users, and you'll kind of say, yes, 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 no, 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 yes, no, yes, yes, no, no, no. 
And that's probably how you have it in your environment today, right? You use Citrix and Terminal Server for as much as you can, but as you know, it does not work for everyone because of the disadvantages with the graphics and the offline. So you figure out what you can use for server-based computing and what you need to go with some other mechanism. Now, once you decide that server-based computing can support some of your users, now is when you can start to think about how you actually want to use VDI versus terminal server. So what, what you'll find, by the way, also is um, this is not going to be an, an all or nothing solution because maybe server-based computing, these technologies are getting better and better and better. So this is sort of, uh, it's, a, it's a cycle that goes on and on. You look at the applications you need today, some you can deploy via server-based computing, some you can deploy the old way. If you have to deploy applications the old way, maybe you can use AppV or Zen App Streaming or Thin App or Install Free or um, SVS or Xenocode or Endeavors. Did I forget anyone? So there's always products. Maybe you can virtualize them, maybe you can deploy them the old, the old way. But it's, it's a separate thing. Okay. So far, so good. So. Yay for TS. Let's, let's continue our conversation now. So now that we've decided all the applications in your environment, yes, some of them are good for server-based computing. Now let's go and look at that server-based computing chunk and try to figure out, for those that work with server-based computing, do we want to use VDI or do we want to use TS? So let's start with TS. Yay for TS. Yay for TS. Come on. <laughs> well, screw you guys. I'll say yay for TS. Um, don't, um, you don't have to put in the comments that I said screw, screw you guys to the, to the audience. That's not uh, unnecessary. Um, yeah, so let's look at it. So, now when I'm talking about yay for TS, I want to talk about some advantages of the terminal server, right? But I want to make 100% clear so everyone's understanding that these advantages I'm talking about are the advantages of terminal server when compared to VDI. Because we know that terminal server is server-based computing. We already talked about management, access, performance, security. These are the advantages of server-based computing in general. So now, once you look at server-based computing, what are the specific advantages of terminal server-based server-based computing as opposed to a VDI-based thing? First one, flat out, is user density. And people used to measure user density based on how many users you could get on a server. But you can't really do that now, because now servers have lots of cores, and they have lots of memory, and a lot of them are even virtualizing their servers themselves. Um, anyone here virtualizing terminal servers in your environment? Look around. There's a good number of people. Um, uh, Ruben Sprout and Jeroen Vethekamp had a session, the Project uh, Virtual Reality Check, and, and they said in their session, it is now time to virtualize your terminal server. Uh, Performance-wise, it's, it's okay. So, I mean, this does not mean that um, you, know, you have to go out and do that now, but there's no, there's no reason not to virtualize terminal servers today. My point is, so you can't talk about, when we talk about user density, we can't talk about how many users you fit on a server. We look at it more in how much hardware you have to buy to support a given number of users. And regardless of what that number is, in terms of euros per user, terminal server will be a lower cost solution than, than BDI. So that's certainly one of the yay for terminal server, uh, one of the advantages of terminal server. The second advantage we have of terminal server is what I'll call automatic thin provisioning. By thin provisioning, I just mean that multiple users are sharing the same copy of Windows. And by definition, this is what you get in terminal server, right? You install one server, you have 50 users using it, they're all using the same copy of Windows. In VDI, you don't get that for free. Well, yes, it's a feature of the product. So VMware has View Composer with Link clones. Citrix has dynamic provisioning services, previously known as Citrix Provisioning Server, previously known as Arden's Server. So there are technologies that do that, but the point is it's, it's something you have to engineer and figure out. Terminal Server, it just exists with the platform. Terminal Server is a mature technology. Like it or not, VDI is very new as a concept, and a lot of people are figuring out things as they're building these projects. Terminal Server has been in use in its current form for, let's say, what, 12 years, 13?